From the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at Amazon reInvent 2015. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal from the noise, breaking it down, getting down and dirty, getting under the hood, looking at the business benefits. We just talked about ecosystem. Now we're going to talk technology. We're here with uh, Gary Clark, IT CTO, Corporate Vice President at Juniper Networks, reports to the CIO, not to be confused, you're a technical CIO-like type person. You're in the trenches, but you don't have any responsibility to manage the numbers, right? right? Oh, very good, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good morning, John. Um, we, uh, we're going to be at your event coming up, so it's looking forward to getting more data. Um, new management team at Juniper, a lot, of, a lot of young technical executives. Yes. Which I love, I've been a big fan of that. Yes. Product guys at the helm, always a winning formula yep. in my mind. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the network that's here, right? Yes. You guys are a huge player in that, so yes. give us your take. What at first, what's your take as a network person? You're looking up the stack. Yep. There's always the danger to creep up the stack. Yes. Amazon's kind of doing that. Yeah, yeah, they, they got are. their own stack. What's your take of this whole world? So yeah, I, so at Juniper Networks, we're a very focused company. We, we're really focused around being uh, network excellence and network innovation. And uh, the good news as this internet thing, the big discussion this morning, Verda made a big announcement on it. Uh, inevitably aids our growth, almost by definition. Our, our, our core mission initially was stated nearly, nearly 20 years ago, 17, 18 years ago now. Very important, connect um, everything, empower everyone. That model is even more current, is even more relevant today, I think. So you guys partner, also a partner and a customer of AWS. Yes. Talk about that, you're moving some of your IT stuff into Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, how is that changing your cloud relationship with the company? Just give us some insight into color into, into that okay. relationship. So, um, like, many, uh, like many IT groups, we're trying to move into the cloud uh, progressively. We're, we've, uh, we're in excess of 85% on our journey. So from a corporate IT point of view, we're, we're pretty significantly there, considering we were a traditional company and we've moved to the cloud, I think. Not, not born in the cloud, as many other uh, newer companies are. However, we've made significant investments with Amazon and uh, and I'm pleased to say they're a big customer of ours. We're, big, we're now an emerging partner of theirs, and they're a great supplier to me. So I'm in this wonderful so position they're where they're routers and gear. Uh, they, they, yes, some some of our kits. So it's pretty important to us, and and they're uh, driving our innovation as well to meet their ever-growing needs in in the cloud to provide services back to me. So it's a, it's almost an idyllic position uh, for, for me to sit in. Yeah, you know, uh, we're also a customer of Amazon. Uh, we use their stuff, uh, cloud for our crowd chat stuff, and so mm -hmm. it's great, they're a great platform. So that kind of changed our media business a little bit because we're a media company, we're not a cloud company, but the okay. cloud is part of the future, right? So Juniper has been known as a box company, and yes. so is Cisco and everybody else, but you certainly had software in your DNA. The founder yes. um, is very software centric, yes. has been for over a decade, pushing basically SDN, Junos and whatnot over the years. So yes. Um, Pradeep is a, a fantastic entrepreneur, a big fan. Um, but how is the perception of Juniper changing with AWS? How is that changing? So I think um, if I stand back and look at Juniper's model, yes, the traditional box shifter, uh, we focused uh, a great deal on one axis, which was performance and scale. So if you want something fast in a core network, you need uh, high performance data center products, you need embedded security. We, we work in all that space and we are moving many of our products now to a virtual environment. So we've recently announced um, on, on some platforms uh, the avail availability of virtual firewall, virtual SRX, and virtual routers. So this enables that uh, position that we saw a lot of companies in today, the hybrid cloud, just like my company is in today, invested heavily into uh, running services in Amazon, but also heavily invested in, in a hybrid environment, which I see many of the corporations in. So that suits our needs. As our company's pivoting more towards software, then we need to move at that speed, that move, uh, move at that speed also. And Amazon's enabling our business to achieve that agility, particularly customer facing. Well that's great stuff with Juniper. Congratulations on all the, all the integration, partner, customer of Amazon, it's fantastic. Uh, I'd like you to take your Juniper hat off for a second, put sure. your IT CTO hat on. Yes. Um, because it's really an interesting time right now. It's really 
I mean, on one level, intoxicating. The, all the opportunity, the technology, yep. it's super exciting. On the other hand, it's scary, crazy scary, as Stu Miniman at Wikibon said. Uh, and David Floyer, one of our other analysts, uh, was on uh, the first day, talking about the challenges of re-platforming yes. for big IT shops. Yep. Can you share some insight into that? Because you're a technical CTO uh, for IT. The levels of scale on the transformation. I mean, some people would just wish they have a magic wand, say, okay, go to the cloud, I want the economics, I want the OPEX, yes. you know, just genie in the bottle kind of thing. How hard is it to do that? Transforming, replatforming the entire IT. Got it, so we started the journey about three and a half years ago, laid down an architecture. As it happens, we started with the network first. It was interesting to hear the uh, head of professional services yesterday for Amazon indicating that a lot of people missed that first step. So he's, his first box was, hey, key transformation architecture. I have to agree with him. I am an architect of, yeah. uh, for, you have a for foundation. my living. And with that foundation, you enable that cloud interconnect. So being smart around that development is pretty important. Um, so set an architecture. Move what you can to SaaS, of course. Not everything's going to, yeah. no all of our applications are going to be there. So we've been great, uh, other great partners like Office 365, uh, Salesforce.com, many other, uh, again, customer partner kind of relationships. So uh, take some of the easy wins and tackle some of the, um, and tackle the training very seriously. Deep training, uh, Amazon's been great there. We've worked with partners through, Cloud mm -hmm. Technology Partners is a partner. So we've, we've yet leveraged, if you like, the new, the new uh, infrastructure, the new yeah. ecosystem that's coming up around Amazon. I tell you what, the most exciting thing, I think in this transformation, this technology thing, how, how hard is it? I think Amazon is making it easier. These announcements around Lambda, the announcements around a serverless build, I can see this is going to be great for my data, data analytics, BI uh, application areas, which I think clearly they're empowering. And, and other, other key, key statements they've made, they've, they've configured their compute towards specific, uh, like in-memory yeah. compute around HANA, very smart move I think on, on their part to get into that marketplace. So I think all these pieces have enabled us to have set an architecture and then go to the market pretty aggressively. So we, we, we figure we're, I say, 85% there, three years. I think another 18 months we'll be grossly in the cloud. Yeah, I mean, they also did, they were smart. They did building blocks. Yes. Um, when I sat down with Andy Jassy, it was very clear. A few building blocks, and then they built up from there. And it really becomes an issue of easy, right? So like, standing stuff up is a theme you hear with Amazon. Standing stuff up easily and fast. Yes. Getting some value. Yes. But it's not, it sounds simple. But to your point, it's an architectural game. Right. And then construction, right, so. And, and I think Verna made a good point this morning. A, a complex systems are born from simple ideas and you expand upon those ideas. And that was his, his yeah. uh, lecture, if you like, for the yeah. day. Uh, it was a total lecture. But I want his one uh, comment that I tweeted, I want to get your take on this, because sure. I loved it. And I kind of I hear what he's saying. He says, everyone knows how to build reliable systems. They just didn't have the hardware budget to do it. Yes. Basically, he was referring to is, we understand on the, on the theory on a whiteboard, a lot of smart people know architecture can lay out the ideal reliable system. Yep but then implementing it, Wasn't it's so like easy. an idea, everyone's got, everyone's got the same idea, but execution is what makes the difference. Right. What is he, what is he talking about there when he says uh, reliable system? Is he talking about the cloud as a lower cost structure, a more enabling technology, all of the above? What's I, your take I, on I that? I think they, uh, so if you take it to the building blocks, they've looked at the model very intelligently about the, the, uh, the idea of elasticity to provide auto-scaling, that, that nature. These are fundamental building blocks which would be hard to achieve in previous processes. You'd ultimately scale out of some box and you, you wouldn't be able to achieve that. So they've unleashed that area. They've done global load balancing, gives you the high availability. These are these key things in transforming this high reliability. So high availability is a key thing. Disaster recovery is another key thing. These are natively uh, built into the Amazon cloud. And I think this is how he says it can be made simple. They have made it simpler because these are now on-demand services. To construct that lot can be done at a, and it's not so much the price point, the complexity of it. They, in fact, in fact made it simple, I, I, I believe. Yeah, they've done a good job. Their integrated stack, their integrated mission is really, to me, I think was going to look back on history. But I want to get your take on something that we use a car analogies all the time. Yes. Since BMW was on stage doing yes. their little, you know, connected car thing, good school. Um, as geeks, we love the car, love the color red, yeah. love to have a, you know, yes. Ferrari. But under the hood, there's a lot of things going on. I want to, and you're involved in that with Juniper. 
there's a lot of stuff at the network level yes. that a lot of people aren't seeing because they just like the car. Yep. They want to just drive around and have fun, do whatever their yep. workloads are. Indeed, right? yep. So, exactly. okay, in, under the hood, what is the core innovation right now in the network? Because Amazon has guys working on the network. You got SDN, you got NFE, you got all this stuff going on, virtualization. Yep. What's your take on all this? So, um, it's pretty clear to me that the complex networks are your complex problems. So in that axis of uh, scale out and scale up to uh, the scale of the modern internet uh, services or, uh, or internet of things is a classic example. On the other axis, it's about performance and management. And it's about automation. It's automate or die. The complexity uh, will consume us if, we're not, if we don't automate. And we saw more and more of those services. So as the tech guy looking up the stack, I'm seeing this, this innovation very clearly happening. We're making significant investments in uh, we used to call it in-house the big brain. What are we trying to achieve here? It's how the internet of network things is controlled and provi provides automation in automatic response to security events, to network congestion events, to quality of service alerts. That automation up this other axis is the turning point in the network and we need it for the, to achieve scale. Okay, so let's just say that we are in a new era where there's cars and ITs in the cloud. The old IT is the horse and buggy. Yes. Okay. So now everyone's got cars, roads got to be paved. You talk about skills and training. Mm. We got architecture, we have new construction for how to build out large scale reliable systems mm -hmm. in fully integrated stacks, all et cetera, et cetera. We'd love that. Training, who, what is the skill set? What are the skill gaps? What are the new guys that are going to be hanging the iron, if you will, for this new construction? Architecture has been laid out, now they got to go execute. What, what is the core skill set? Skill set? Interdisciplinary, data science, all this stuff's going on. Yes. What's your take? I'm seeing a shortfall in our, in our education system here in the US, which uh, is uh, upsetting many of us in the industry and causing a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion. Uh, just next week, there's the Grace Hopper event ar ar around women in the industry. We'll be there live, by the way. Very good. I, I, I look forward to seeing you there again. Um, we'll be supporting that as a, as a platinum uh, supporter. Again, that's really about us trying to influence education to provide more of what we need in the industry. Yeah, diversity, and, uh, STEM. Yes, exactly. Huge problem. STEM problem, and and we're seeing, we're, we're not seeing any fundamental change at this point. We're, we're seeing people talking about it. Uh, I, I, we're trying to be active. We're, we're a partner with some universities, we're a partner yeah. with colleges, and we're trying to do more uh, to improve that space. And this and is a big issue to me. We're very passionate on Silicon Inc. We do our best to get the data out there, and thank you for sharing your knowledge, but this is the issue for us. This, you can't hire enough people. I mean, you've got to talk up and down the stack, data scientists down to SDN engineers. Yes. There's not enough people. Nope. So, okay, okay. so you need money. <laughs> okay. Hence the ecosystem conversation we yes. just had. Yeah, yes. Yeah, well, the, so education is a, is a big thing, and I, and I trust there'll be some more focus on it in this coming year. Gary, thanks so much. Final point, I'll give you the final word. Yes. Share it to folks that are watching. What's the, that aren't here at the event? Yep. I mean, it's kind of magical in a way. It's exciting, mm -hmm. a lot of buzz. Sure. But real business is being done. What's the vibe of the show? What's going on here? What's the big story this year around Amazon Web Services? They're building, uh, enabling us as um, customers of Amazon to build things faster, quicker, for sure. And fundamentally cheaper because of the building block. So I think this, and the classic example today was, uh, was this internet of things. This is a massive growing market. Uh, it's good for my company, it's good for the business. It's good for everybody. It's good for everybody. More, and more training's needed, all this stuff. Yes, and, and the automation that they've achieved in, in bring, bringing service to the market is just outstanding. So This is a rising big, the tide. Big, the, big, the big thing around that is the ability in which we can now move nearer to the internet of things speeds that's required to keep up with the market. Gary, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge here on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. You're watching SiliconAngle.tv and we will be at the Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing. Next week, I'll be there with Jeff Frick. We're going to be down there, our big stage. We're going to be having a ton of women in tech talking about the journey, the challenges, opportunities. Great stuff. And you're watching SiliconAngle.tv. And we have every Wednesday, Women in Wednesday, tech featured athlete on SiliconAngle.tv. You're watching us live here now at Amazon reInvent. We'll be right back after this short break.